Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Pinky Sense Academy. Please like, subscribe, and comment. This is Biology Paper 1, Revision Questions and Answers. Uh, by, it's a Nabi Stajet paper. So, the first question you asked, state why the following processes are essential in living organism the first one is excretion so first of all you ask yourself what is excretion you say that excretion is the removal of metabolic waste products and substances in excess of requirement so excretion enables organism to get rid of metabolic waste products that could be toxic to the cells for example urea excess salts excess water so if those substances are left to accumulate in the body they are going to be toxic to the cells irritability which is the ability of an organism uh, to detect and respond to changes in the surrounding so irritability enables organism to find food it enables organism to find mates it also enables the organism to escape from predators and also from other dangerous situations so the diagram below shows a type of epithelial tissue so x what is the name of the hair like structure labeled x that hair like structure is called cilia it's this one here it's called cilia state the function of that hair like structure so it is uh, it is used to re to move materials over the epithelium for example it it moves uh, bacteria up and then you swallow. Name two mammalian organ with this type of epithelium. It is found in the trachea where it traps the bacteria and other dust particles. Then it moves them up, uh, which is trapped by mucus, moves it up and then you swallow it to be killed by hydrochloric acid in the stomach. It is also found in the oviduct or the fallopian tube where it helps in movement of the ovum. The third question, you are told, uh, you are told, explain how the surface area to volume ratio affect the rate of diffusion in living organism. So what is diffusion in the first place? You should know that diffusion is the movement of molecules and ions from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration down a concentration gradient. So for diffusion to take place, there are factors that affect diffusion. For example, this one, the surface area to volume ratio. So surface area to volume ratio, you look at it in terms of a big molecule or a small size molecule. When you have a small size molecule, it has a large surface area to volume ratio. And a big size molecule has a smaller surface area to volume ratio. So the smaller the molecule or the larger the surface area to volume ratio, then the higher the rate of diffusion. Other, other factors uh, that affect diffusion are factors like uh, temperature. Of course, the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of diffusion. Uh, the thickness of membrane. The thicker the membrane, the lower the rate of diffusion and uh, concentration gradient the greater the concentration gradient which is the difference in concentration between two points then they have the rate of diffusion as well then you are told to distinguish between plasmolysis and deplasmolysis as used in cell physiology so plasmolysis is the shrinking of a plant cell when it is placed in a concentrated solution where it loses a lot of water by osmosis and therefore it shrinks and you find that the cell membrane uh, moves away from the cell wall and the cytoplasm and shrinks towards the center uh, for deplasmolysis it's when you take that plasmorite cell in a hypotonic solution so that it regains its original size by gaining water by osmosis 
So the plasmolysis is the process by which a, a plasmolysis cell gains water by osmosis. The next question you are told that a food sample was made into a suspension and a few drops of iodine were added to it, a blue-black color developed. A sample of the same food had no effect on Benedict's solution. Some millet seeds which had been soaked for 48 hours were clashed and mixed with the food suspension and the mixture was incubated in, a, in warm water bath for uh, for six hours after who it, after the incubation the sample gave negative results for iodine solution and positive results for benedict solution so what does the blue black color develop in addition of iodine indicate so whenever you are you see uh, iodine solution and you are carrying out food test you should know that that is testing for starch so in presence of starch iodine solution changes from uh, the brown color into blue black account for the negative results with iodine solution after incubation you find that the diastase present in the seed hydrolyzes hydrolyzed uh, starch to maltose that means starch was broken down into maltose why was it necessary to soak the millet seeds for the first in this first in the second test that is to activate the enzymes um, the role of incubator there it is to maintain temperature optimum temperature for enzyme activity number five you are told the chemical formula of maltose molecule is C12H22O11 and not C12H24O10. Explain. So during the condensation of disaccharides, you have water molecule is lost or it's produced. The next question is number six. You are told. Uh, the diagram below shows some um, illustration of the circulatory system of a certain animal. Study it and answer the questions that fall. So you can see this animal has a uh, three chambered heart. He has. Um, you're supposed to identify A and B. So for B, for A, this one, it's ventricle. For B, it's the lungs and this I think these two must be the atrium. Then you are told give the class give the class give the class of organisms with the above circulatory system. It is found in um in amphibia amphibia number seven you are told deficiency of vitamin k leads to excessive breeding even from small cats explain why so vitamin k it's a vitamin that is necessary for blood clotting and it helps in formation of prothrombin in the liver, which is an important clotting factor. Because without prothrombin, then you cannot have thrombin. That is why excessive, uh, that's why deficiency of vitamin K leads to excessive bleeding. What is meant by the term ventilation in gaseous exchange? Ventilation, in short, it's, uh, it's whereby uh you you know that oxygen supply is continuous or how the oxygen rich air is supplied to the gas exchange surface and carbon dioxide is removed from the gas exchange surface or the respiratory surface that is what is meant by ventilation so when we say that gas exchange surface should be highly ventilated it means that they should be open uh, they should have enough supply of oxygen rich air and also removal of carbon dioxide 
Gas exchange surface also should have a rich supply of blood capillaries to transport the respiratory gases. They should be wet to dissolve the respiratory gases and then they should have a thin epithelium uh, for faster diffusion of the respiratory gases. The next question you are told, in a bony fish, water flows along the gill lamellae in a direction opposite to the flow of the blood. Explain the significance of that phenomenon. So that, that phenomenon is called a countercurrent exchange system. So countercurrent exchange system where blood flows in opposite direction uh, with uh, water so that there is a steep concentration gradient between the two, uh, between the, uh, the water and the blood so that oxygen can easily diffuse from the water into the blood of the fish and then the carbon dioxide can easily diffuse from the body of the fish or surface, surface of the gill filaments into the water and gas exchange takes place efficiently. Differentiate between glycolysis and Krebs cycle. So glycolysis is the initial phase of respiration where glucose is broken down into uh, pyruvate or pyruvic acid. That process does not require presence of oxygen. Krebs cycle involves oxidation of pyruvic acid to produce carbon dioxide water and energy how is the calculation of respiratory quotient significant in biology respiratory quotient is the ratio between the carbon dioxide uh, produced and the oxygen consumed during aerobic respiration so uh, that one uh, respiratory quotient, for example, for fat, it's 0 0.7, for proteins, it's 0 0.1. Uh, so you, you, you are able to know the, the types of the substrate or the food that is being oxidized, and then it helps you to know the conditions uh, or the type of respiration. Name two organic product, waste products of in plant. You have colchicine, cat, cannabis, all those. Uh, state two conditions that determine the uniqueness of protein. So the sequence of the amino acid forming them. Remember, for proteins to be formed, amino acids have to be linked together. And then the number of amino acids involved. So then you are told, describe how mammalian body deals with excess amino acids. So in case the body of a mammal has excess amino acid, then what happens is deamination. The amino acids are deaminated or the body gets rid of them by deamination. Deamination is where the carbon, uh, the amino acids are broken down in into two parts. There is the amino containing group or nitrogen containing group and the carbon containing group or the carbohydrate group. The carbohydrate group is converted into energy which may be stored in the muscles or it's broken down to release energy while the nitrogen containing group is converted into urea which is then taken to the kidney and the body gets rid of it. State two factors that facilitate ultrafiltration within the glomeruli and the Bowman's capsule. So there is semi-permeability of the glomeruli. That means that the, the glomeruli only allows small sized molecules to pass through. It does not allow the large sized molecule. That's why uh, molecules like water, uh, amino acids, glucose, salts, they are allowed to pass, but large molecules like proteins and blood cells are not able to pass as well as the hormones. So that is semi-permeability. Then there is high pressure within the glomeruli. Remember the glomeruli is made of uh, small blood vessels or capillaries which are intertwined together. 
Of course, the, then there is the afferent and efferent arterial. They have different diameter that enables ultrafiltration to take place. Then you are told which liver disease is characterized by contraction and hardening of parts of the liver due to death of the liver cells and replacement of with the fibrous tissue. That is jaundice. The next question, you are told, people regulate their body temperature more easily in hot, dry weather than in hot, humid weather. Give a reason. So, when it is dry, the water holding capacity is high, so for faster evaporation. And when it's humid, the water holding capacity is uh, low, and therefore low rate of evaporation. What is the role of dissecting needle in biological experiment? They are used for spreading and attaching parts of animals being dissected. State 1 limitation of a potometer. A potometer is a diagram, uh, it's an apparatus that is used to measure the rate of transpiration in that it helps to measure the rate of water loss and then you, uh, the rate of water absorption and then you equate it with the rate of water loss through transpiration uh, uh, the reason is it does not measure transpiration directly you just measure the absorption of water but then you you assume that the amount of water absorbed is the same as the amount of water lost through transpiration describe the following conditions how the following conditions uh, promote cross pollination heterostyry that is where the style is longer than the filaments or the stigma is above the anthers. That uh, makes sure that the pollen grains from the anthers will not reach the, uh, the, the stigma of the female part of the same flower. Self-sterility is where the pollen grain of a plant cannot be able to fertilize the the stig stigma or the, the female part of the flower so they are incompatible that will ensure the plant does not fertilize itself name the chemical that is responsible for ripening of the fruit ethylene it's responsible for that give a reason why uh, kenyan government has failed in its effort to eradicate malaria attack and the spread uh, ignorance from the people. People do not use mosquito uh, treated nets. The parasite that transmits malaria has many hosts. Then there is uh, lack of proper disposal of paper bags, uh, plastics that act as bleeding places for the mosquito. State three characteristics of phylum. Arthropoda. Arthropoda or arthropods are organisms that have uh, jointed appendages. Their bodies are segmented or divided into smaller parts. Then they have exoskeleton and they have open circulatory system. All those are characteristics that are common to the arachnids, to the insects. And crustaceans which are all classified as arthropods. I'll try two reasons that make fan plants more advanced than mosses. They have a well developed vascular system, they have more differentiated body and the fertilization is independent of water. Then you are told construct a three step dichotomous key based on the following uh, characteristics of leaves in the year order type of leaf venation and margin so type of leaf you can start with simple leaf and compound leaf so leaf simple leaf compound then type of venation this could be parallel venation and uh, network or reticulate venation leaf margin could be serrated or smooth margin so you can construct a simple dichotomous key like that uh, 
so the dichotomous key shows uh, characteristics that are closed but then they are varied and you, you use it to classify uh, different types of organisms. Describe the procedure of estimating population of star grass by a quadrat method. So when you're using quadrat, what you do is you first of all you identify the area that you're going to uh, that you're going to measure or to calculate the population, estimate the population, then you estimate the area, uh, length and width approximately. And then you make many throws as possible randomly at one point, another one uh, within the selected area and you count the number of organisms inside there, quadrat, and then you get the average of throws and use it to calculate the population of the star grass. Here you are told to state State two behavior of chromosome in Professor One of meiosis that differ from the behavior of chromosomes during uh, mitosis. So mitosis is a type of cell division where the parent cell divides into two daughter cells, and it is normally present in the normal cells. While meiosis, it's a type of cell division where the parent cell divides into four cells and each cell has half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So in Professor One of meiosis uh, there is formation of chiasma or chiasmata where there is exchange of uh, genes uh, between the two chromosomes. Uh, that is where uh, synapses or uh, crossing over. But in mitosis there is no crossing over. The, the figure below shows a section of a nucleic acid so it has C, A, T, G, G, A and C. So give a reason to, to identify the, that type. So that one is DNA. If it were RNA then T would have been replaced with uracil. Uh, reason is presence of thiamine. Name the disorders that arise due to gene substitution, hemophilia, color blindness, albinism, sickle cell anemia. A cross between a tall garden pea plant and a dwarf pea plant produce a mixture of tall and dwarf plants in the ratio of 1 is to 1. State the gametes of the parent. So a tall, it's capital T for tall, small t for tall, and then you cross it with the homozygous recessive, which is small t, small t. So the genetic type, the genotype, you have tall and dwarf. Parental genotype, uh, it's capital T, small t. So this is parental phenotype, parental genotype, then fusion. So uh, all of them, you have two tall plants and two dwarf plants. The question is, removal of an ovary before the fourth month of pregnancy can terminate the pregnancy. Account for this. So before the fourth month of pregnancy, the placenta is not fully uh, formed. So the ovaries plays the role of producing hormone progesterone that manages the pregnancy. But after the fourth month, you find that the placenta takes over uh, the role of producing hormone progesterone. And that's why if the ovaries are removed after the fourth month, the pregnancy will still be maintained. Explain why meta how metamorphosis reduces competition for resources in a habitat. So each stage of development occupies a different ecological niche. The pupa is non-feeding, but the larvae is the feeding stage. A forest has a higher carrying capacity compared to grassland with equal dimension. Give a reason. So in a forest, the animals occupy different ecological niches, unlike 
the glasslands where animals occupy uh, close ecological niches and therefore there is steep competition. Uh, construct a pyramid of number where 10 trees have been inhabited by 100 birds which are fed on by 40 kites. So it will be like inverted pyramid like this. Trees are less than the number of organisms that feed on them. I'll try in two ways in which knowledge of biology is supplied in agriculture, supplied in close breeding, uh, solving environmental problems, application of hormones in plant growth. Thank you guys for, for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Bye.